to control malaria, it should be a multi-pronged approach. We cannot go with one approach. So in that context, we have uh, what we call a artemisinin resistance strategy from 2011 to 15. Now, based on that strategy, we can reduce the number of cases by 80% from 2012 to 2017 and the number of deaths by more than 90%, which is quite phenomenal in my country in the context of highly endemic malaria cases. For the second phase, starting from 2016 to 30, we have developed another strategy, but this, this strategy is based on headquarters global technical strategy as well as Mekong sub-regional strategy. Most important thing for drug resistant malaria is we have to do therapeutic efficacy tests for the medicines that we are using, whether they are still effective or not, in terms of quality assured medicines. So all, up to now, we are lucky enough, out of the five artemisinin based combination therapy, four are still sensitive, which is extremely lucky for us. What is most important is vector. Like if there is no vector, there will be no transmission of malaria. The example is that if you send 10,000 cases, malaria cases to Norway, nothing will happen, you know, because there is no vector. But if you send 10 cases of malaria to an area where there is a vector, it is highly likely that there will be an outbreak of malaria. So which means we have to take care of vector bionomics, vector behavior, we have to do vector mapping. That is very important. Without vector control, we are controlling malaria like a blind eye.